Before we hop into today's video, I want to tell you guys that my website is live. I think it would be really beneficial to you guys, especially because I have a PDF download that's going to go hand in hand with this video and it's going to be a little bit of a guide and a way that you can keep yourself accountable through your week, through your days, to eliminate distractions, to focus on what needs to be focused on, and to just really thrive through your weeks ahead. So that is linked down below. I hope you guys like the website and check it out. I have a bunch of other cool stuff on there and I'm excited to start working on some recipes and uploading that for you guys too. So I hope you enjoy and let's go ahead and get into the video. Hola muchachos, welcome here. If you're new, my name is Sarah Therese and I would classify myself as a very busy person. I'm a full-time stay-at-home mama. I work from home alongside my husband and that is the income for our family. I am your very traditional homemaker. I make my own breads and meals at home. I invest into a lot of things throughout the house such as chores and activities and look and design that create a very very nice space to live in. We also homeschool our kids, which can really take up a lot of time. And we have three kids and one baby on the way. And with all that stuff and wife stuff and mom stuff and appointments and church, with everything, time management for myself is very key. Time management for me has actually become such an easy habit and routine in my usual weekly and daily life that most of the time I don't even know that I'm doing it or practicing it, it's just very natural and it just works and flows with my life really well. So the idea of this video didn't come from me, but a lot of you guys just sending me DMs asking for some tips about time management and kind of how I organize and schedule my days and my weeks. So hopefully this video will answer all those questions and be very helpful. I completely understand what it's like to be a busy mom, to feel like you need a 28 hour day to get everything done and how sometimes you just feel like you've lost lost control over your life and the way that it works. So we're gonna hop into today's video. I'm really just gonna go over a ton of stuff that I do and implement into my life. You gotta work at it in the beginning and then over time, it's just gonna be natural and you're gonna feel like you have control. You're gonna feel like you have time and you're gonna feel really productive and good in so many ways, but like specifically mentally, this is really, really important stuff that we're talking about. So I hope that you guys enjoy today's video let's go ahead and get started boom let's get started Time management can be tricky. And I think the first thing we can really lean towards when it comes to like, how do I schedule my life and time management is Google. And you Google time management and so many things pop up. There's the Eisenhower matrix. There's the Kanban board, the Pomodoro technique and time management grids. And I just want to let you know, I don't follow any of them. I follow what works best for my life. There's definitely things that you can look at and tweak and pull from those things. But as you're watching this video, just remember this is time management stuff that works for me and my specific situation. You may be in a completely different space. So start this video and watch this video, taking things from it where you are really thinking this would benefit me and my family the most. Now, even though I just went over a bunch of things that I do and that I'm busy with, my life is very organized, it's structured around routine, it is healthy, it is planned, which keeps me safe and sane mentally, and it also leaves me room to take care of myself and have some wiggle room there. And lastly, we need to stop saying, I need more time, I need more time, and realizing that a lot of the time we're not gonna get more time. We just need to be more thoughtful and intentional towards the time that we have and using it to benefit us and just be wise with our time. We can want more time all we want, but what we really need to focus on is the time that we already have and how we are structuring that time to benefit us the best. Let's really get started. I feel like too many people don't take planning seriously. And I understand kind of that mindset because it can be like, it's so simple. Why would planning help me? It's such a simple, easy thing to do. Properly planning your week is going to give you control over your week. It's gonna give you peace knowing what is to come. It's gonna give you the ability to prepare and then just mentally stay sane during all of that. I am a huge planner and 
I know every single week would fall to pieces if I didn't properly plan it out. Everyone plans differently, but this is how I personally plan. Every single Sunday, I take about half an hour of the day to sit down, I use my phone, I have a little bit of a notepad, and I just go through a bunch of things, which are as follows. I always schedule out my meals. I'm not someone that ever meal plans our breakfast or lunch, because lunch we usually tackle leftovers or just kind of whatever we have, and then breakfast, it's cereal, it's eggs, it's oatmeal. I'm specific thinking about dinners when it comes to meal planning. While I am there, I'm going to choose what day I'm going to go to the grocery store, which is usually a Monday or a Tuesday at the very beginning of the week because I need produce for all those meals coming up. And then while I'm doing that, I'm going to figure out my shopping list. Once I've figured out my meals, or sometimes I do this like in conjunction as I figure out my meals, I'm gonna go through the fridge and the pantry and the freezer, what do we have, what can I use up, and I'm gonna really take advantage of the items that we already have in our pantry, especially if I feel like it's very well stocked because it's gonna save us money as well. Next, I'm going to schedule out large chores. Now, everyone has a different idea of what a large chore is. For me, large chores is dusting and wiping down like the entire house, like every single surface, like all these little things. <laughs> I should probably do this. That's a large chore. That's gonna take me about 45 minutes to even an hour to properly do it. I need to schedule out some time during my week to do that. It could be cleaning the inside and outside of the car. It could be tackling all the bathrooms. Something that for me personally takes about an hour to do, I consider it a large chore. I will either schedule those things into a certain day or I'll just have them on a kind of weekly list of these chores I want to tackle when I feel like I just have an hour of free time during my week, I can go ahead and do them there. Next, play dates, visits, uh, any sort of socializing, I literally plan those on Sunday. If someone calls me on a Monday or a Tuesday or last minute and wants to do something, I always say no. And the reason why is I always have something else going on because my week has previously been planned. People close to me know that if they want to hang out or something, they have to plan it in advance and I don't find shame in that and I don't feel bad about that because it makes my life just work so much better. And we're going to talk about saying no in a little bit here, but next. I plan out my work. So I do YouTube, I do Instagram and a bunch of other stuff on the side and work really takes up a lot of time. So I plan out my work, what videos am I going to do, I think about posts, I think about brands sponsorships, uh, emails. Wednesdays are my full on work day where Kieran hangs out with the kiddos and then I'm in the office most of the day so that we schedule in as well. And then lastly, just any other significant events that take up a lot of time or even just take up a lot of mental space. Planning isn't just so you can have the feeling of like, oh, everything is properly scheduled. Mentally, it keeps you very sane. So if I have something coming up, whether it's a meeting or a talk or something, I will schedule it and write it down even for the day before just to kind of mentally get ready for it. Because sometimes I'm just having a day or a week and I need to give myself a little bit of grace to prepare for what is to come. So the whole idea of planning is you are taking your big chunks, the like bread and butter of your week, putting it throughout your week. And then after you've gone and kind of conquered those big things and laid them out through the week, all the little small things are gonna be able to fit in easily around those big things. I use my phone for all of my planning. I find it easy to have everything from emails to social media to contacts to my calendar all on my phone. I make it really, really simple and that's just the best way it works for me. Okay, so the next thing I really wanna talk about is things that I implement into my everyday life that's going to stop me from wasting time, that's going to help me be more efficient with my time. And again, the whole thing about time management is not wishing you had more time, but using the time that you have to its best. So 
we're gonna start with you, you know I'm gonna say this, organization. I like to create a space that works well for me. By creating a space that works well for me, I am easily able to find things and accomplish tasks, and I just feel very much, again, in control. The thing about time management is sometimes you can feel like you're not in control if you don't have time management, and all this stuff is coming up, and you're wondering where things are, and you just feel like kind of helpless in your own house. I feel like organization can really tackle a lot of that so decluttering making sure everything has a spot working together with your family to minimize simplify and be more intentional about your space and where everything is hugely helpful I am NOT lying when I say I don't lose things I don't feel overwhelmed by the items in my house and I really feel like my space works for me versus me working for my space next throughout my week this is hard for me, this is the hardest thing for me, but I do really try to work on it, and it is learning when to delegate tasks. Having both me and my husband work from home is fantastic because he's able to give me things, I'm able to give him a lot of things, and then on top of that, we do have a two, three, and five-year-old, so I have the ability to give the kids things, such as chores. I don't have to clean up the room, I don't have to get them dressed in the morning. These are things that they're able to do, and I delegate these things to them. For me, the reason delegating is hard because I've honestly struggled with a little bit of a guilt complex from it, but then I'm like, no, we are a family, we are a family unit, and we need to work together for each other's benefit, it can't all be on me. Because, I mean, <laughs> that's not biblical, nor is that healthy for anybody. And training your family to work as a unit is, is something that they're going to use and appreciate their entire lives. Saying no. So, if it was not planned on a Sunday, or even just in advance, there are some days where I'm like, okay, someone calls me on a Tuesday, talks about doing stuff on a Friday, if my Friday is opened, this is doable, maybe I can pull this off. I will only say yes if I can do it without going insane. If I feel like I can do it without jeopardizing my kids and like their schedules or what I need to get done or what Kieran needs to get done. And so much of the time, especially when it's last minute, it does. And it messes with our schedule that we already have planned out. The kids are very familiar with our schedule because we share it with them. And we have a lot of peace and happiness in following our schedule. And we don't have a lot of wiggle room there when it comes to like last minute full day hoo ha ha's hoo ha ha's just because it's not scheduled it's not planned and mentally guys i don't do well with this stuff which is why saying no for me is so important i'm not going to push myself too far in order to say yes to people do i sometimes experience fomo from this absolutely but my family comes first our previous promises come first and we just work really well knowing well in advance about things like this happening. So scheduling in advance is something that we're just very fluent in and that we thrive in. And saying no isn't something you should feel guilty about. Taking shortcuts, and I'm absolutely serious. Taking shortcuts is not a bad thing. Do not feel bad about buying canned food. I have a bread maker so I don't have to spend hours kneading at dough because I make my own bread from home. I put everything into a bread maker and it does all the work for me. That is a shortcut. Some days I wake up, like today, literally like today, and going, you know what? I'm just gonna let my bed breathe. I don't have time to make my bed today. Maybe I'll get to it later, but as of right now, I don't have time. <laughs> that saved me time during the day. Now, did I decide to not make my bed so I could sit on my phone for 10 minutes? Absolutely not. I decided to not make my bed so I could start filming this video so I can start homeschooling my kids soon after this. Also, simple things like decluttering your wardrobe is gonna make it so much easier for you to get dressed in the morning. Instead of being overwhelmed by options, you just have some core pieces that you know you love, that look good with this and that, and it's easy to put something together for the day. So again, time management isn't just supposed to benefit your family, even though it does, it is to benefit you as well, which is why you need to take self-care seriously. Things like investing in your sleep, taking time for things that you really enjoy doing. Make sure that you are eating your meals, not skipping out on meals because you deserve that. You need that energy, you need that power throughout the day. And just in general, don't feel shame over focusing on your needs and what needs you need to have met. Sometimes you are able to fill those needs. Sometimes, again, delegate. Get someone else to help you 
have those needs fulfilled. This is very, very important. Time management is not just to benefit everyone else and then you're left feeling like crap. It's meant to benefit everybody in your household and you are a very vital part of your household. One of the worst things about living in today's world is that we are bombarded with things that are distracting us. You really need to identify places where you waste time. You need to work on eliminating unnecessary distractions. This can be a wide variety of things for different people, but just some of the main ones, the TV. We love having specific times of the day where the TV is on. The kids get to watch a small show every day from about 2.30 to 3, 3.15. And then once in a while, me and Kieran will watch a show in the evening. But TV is not on during the day, especially in the morning. It's something that'll be later on and for a short amount of time. Your phone, uh, social media, reading books, even family can be a distraction. Trust me, I have kids. I know how distracting they are and of course if your kids have needs or if you just want to be with your kiddos that's not what I'm classifying as a distraction I'm more specifically talking about like if they're bored where do they go they go to you and they're like I'm bored I'm bored I'm bored we need to teach our kids to actually kind of rejoice in being bored and then either relaxing in that or from there trying to find something that'll just really kind of make their mind work and it's also reminding your kids it's not your job to fully entertain them all the time. They have the ability to do that for themselves and that's gonna benefit them and it's gonna benefit you. And then I think this is just a huge one, just mindless snacking. You don't feel like doing something and you open your pantry or your fridge and you just kind of grab at some things. Food is a necessity and you need to eat, but mindless snacking takes up just so much time. And honestly, sometimes it can be a distraction for me. So I'm not saying that any of these things are bad. Is the TV bad? No. Is your phone bad? No. Are your kids bad? No, but they can be a unnecessary distraction or in a sense, a time waster. Figure out what those are and try to work towards eliminating those distractions. Be focused on what needs to be done. This is something that takes time. It's the idea of like, don't wake up in the morning. The first thing you touch is your phone and you scroll through it for half an hour. When you wake up in the morning, turn off your alarm get out of bed, turn on a podcast, if anything, but focus on what needs to be done and defocus on distractions. Boom. There are so many daily tasks that you can implement into your everyday routine that's gonna make your later easier. One of those things is prep work. I'm a huge prepper, especially when it comes to meals, because I feel like meals can really take a lot of time. Therefore, I feel like prepping properly gets you ready for later. And if you're taking care of yourself later, when later comes, you're gonna feel so taken care of and in control, it's gonna be fantastic. So for example, last night, I threw a bunch of stuff into the bread maker. I have my dough ready for my pita for tonight for dinner. And I also have been soaking some cashews for a yummy cashew cream that's gonna go inside it with some meat and veggies. Again, it's just a simple way to take care of myself later and be in control and on track for my day. There are so many other ways you can do this as well, such as one load of laundry a day. I tell people this all the time. One load of laundry a day will stop your laundry from just becoming too much. As a family of five, almost six, this works really well for us and we are never overwhelmed by our laundry. Just doing a little bit a day really serves us well. Also, just one quick vacuum a day. It really just takes me about five minutes. You can also, once a day, have a focused area where you do maybe a little bit more cleaning. And then even just generally tidying throughout the day or once a day or just in the evening of your entire space. Again, it's gonna keep you in control of your space of the items around you. And you may even sleep better at night. I find when I have a nice space to wake up to and a nice space to go to bed to, I sleep well and I wake up well. To wrap up this video, I think a lot of moms have that desire to hang out with their kids more. And by following these techniques, you really may realize how much time you're actually able to spend with your kids, but you will go through shifts and times where you're going, I don't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my kids right now. Don't feel guilty about it. Don't feel ashamed about it. And then also realize everything that I've talked about, you do not have to do on your own. I love having the kids 
cook with me, do laundry with me. And to be honest, are they extremely helpful? Yes, sometimes they are extremely helpful. And then other times they're learning and maybe not as helpful <laughs> in those regards, but it is special for me to still be with them and for them to be with me. Letting your kids pull a chair over to the counter so they can watch you cook is really cool. Having them help you with laundry, walking down to the mailbox to get the mail together. There's just certain things that I feel like throughout different points in my life when I feel like I don't have a lot of time for my kids in specific ways that are beyond chores I take them in and I get them to do those things with me and kids are cool kids really don't mind <laughs> at least my kids they are young and chores aren't annoying to them or something they don't want to do but it's something that they do and enjoy and even mildly rejoice in when they get to do it alongside me or Kieran but if you feel like you're maybe losing time with your kids in your schedule invite them into your schedule you might feel like a weird mom or even a bad mom because you're like I'm just making them do chores uh, but kids want to be with you. Listen to an audiobook while you're doing it, play music while you're doing it. There are always ways that you can spend more time with your kids. And even if you're just trying to, in a small way, be intentional about it, they're gonna notice it and they will appreciate it. And I think that makes you a really great parent. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope that you really liked it. Time management can be hard and it's different for everyone because everyone has such a different life and lifestyle, but I hope maybe you got some cool stuff from this video. All the stuff that I mentioned really truly helps me conquer everything that needs to be conquered in my day and week. Yes, I will have feelings of being overwhelmed or how am I actually going to get this done, but by following my steps and a lot of prayer <laughs> by doing these things, um, I usually come out feeling really awesome on the other side. Thank you very much for watching. All the best to you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.